I'm Dr. Jana Tumanoff, and I'd like to talk today a little bit about our lab's projects in the area of engineering interfaces in orthopedic tissues. So what do I mean by orthopedic, tissue, orthopedic um, interfaces? Well, interfaces in orthopedic tissue engineering have been to date somewhat overlooked, but they represent areas where different orthopedic tissues come together. And I have some of them highlighted here with the red circles. So we're talking about things like muscle to tendon, ligament to bone, and cartilage to bone. So we've made a lot of progress in the past 10 years engineering individual tissues, but we haven't focused as much on engineering or understanding what creates these interfaces. However, they're very crucial to the overall function of the musculoskeletal system because this is where load transfer and locomotion take place. So in particular, our lab is focusing at the moment on the ligament to bone insertion. And this is a very unique um, zonal organization of tissues that occurs between the fibrous ligament, which is very strong in tension, and um, this calcified and much stiffer bone. And so to compensate for this, in many areas of the body, there has uh, been the development of this particular insertion point that has uh, a fibrocartilaginous region. And the fibrocartilaginous region contains a slightly different cell type and some different extracellular matrix molecules than that found in the mid-substance of the ligament. And here we're talking about the things like the addition of collagen 2 and aggregate in the extracellular matrix. And um, it's thought that this is developed to reduce stress risers at this interface but that really we know very little about um, the relative contributions of bio, the biochemistry of the tissues and mechanical loading in the development of this overall organization. So we've developed a model in vitro system in our lab to start to tease out the relative contributions of these various things and also then to get, give us some basic biological understanding that we can then use to build better strategies to reconstruct an entire, for example, ligament, uh, bone ligament bone graft. So our uh, model system is based on the um, OPF, which is a PEG-based hydrogel, and this stands for polyethylene glycol fumarate. And um, what's important here is that we have these double bonds that allow for cross-linking so that by adding initiators and either the presence of light or um, increasing the temperature from room temperature to body temperature, for example, this can go from a liquid that you can draw up into a syringe to a fairly firm gel. And we can use this then to encapsulate cells or bioactive factors, and we've shown that this has very good uh, cytocompatibility. Another advantage of this system is that it has the ability to be laminated. So you can add a second layer before the first layer has completely cross-linked, as you see here, and you can get these um, structures that are biphasic or multiple phasic. And even after swelling, you can see that there's a strong interface, so this is covalently bonded at this interface, so these layers don't come apart. And you can start to see that this might be a very useful system to start to recreate that zonal organization that we see at the ligament bone insertion. And our idea is to encapsulate cells, particularly progenitor cells or stem cells within these, and look at these types of modular constructs to better understand what causes the differentiation at this interface. So some ideas are things that we could do with this system is changing the mechanical properties in the two layers to be more like ligament on one side and bone on the other, and looking at how that affects differentiation. Um, we could also include different cell types, so fibroblasts, for example, to represent ligament, and osteoblasts to represent bone, and look at how the interactions between these cell types affects the overall um, matrix production and differentiation. Or we can spatially locate various matrix molecules in these different areas and look at how that affects differentiation. So the other aspect of our model system is a tensile culture bioreactor. And the reason we've chosen this is that it's been known that uh, marostromal progenitor cells differentiate towards tendon and ligament fibroblasts um, in response to cyclic tensile loading. So in collaboration with Dr. Mark Levinston in mechanical engineering at Stanford, um, he's developed this bioreactor, and this is our gels in this bioreactor system. So these gels are fixed on one side to a, a fixed peg, and on the other side there's this rake system that comes down and pulls on them from, um, uh, in a controlled manner, and we can control all of the things like frequency, amplitude, and duration of loading. And this, again, allows us with a very controlled environment. Now we have a very controlled biochemical environment with our hydrogels and a very controlled mechanical environment um, through this loading apparatus. 
So just to show you some of the fancier things we can do with these gels. So these are gels that are in um, these end blocks that will then be placed into the tensile culture rig. Um, and we can see that we can make multiple layers. So these are just gels that are stained with different colors so you can see them. We can make multiple layers or we can do something a little bit fancier with the interfaces. Um, and these are all things that um, we are exploring to um, look at, um, again, these ideas of culturing in particular two different cell types or multiple cell types next to each other. Um, however, we are thinking in terms of a co-culture system that this is about the best we can do in terms of spatial location. And if we wanted more specificity in where we placed the different cell types, for example, that w this wasn't really available with this system. So to address that limitation, we've been working with Dr. Hong Lu in chemical engineering at Georgia Tech to develop um, photo patterning methodologies for these hydrogels. And here we have some masks. And we can see that we get basically, in essence, the shapes that we wanted um, through photo patterning or photo cross-linking of these gels. We then went on and actually placed um, uh, these masks next to each other to form a laminated structure um, with a smaller size scale but similar in concept to what I showed you earlier. And here we actually have two different cell types or cells stained with two different dyes encapsulated next to each other in these laminates. And again, after swelling, we still see that um, these are just two different images, but we have a good robust interface here and that we are able to spatially locate the two different types of cells with our patterning methodology. So this is uh, kind of the, the cell culture, um, co-culture or multi, um, multi type of cell culture that we have going on in the lab. The other thing I wanted to show you an example of is the spatial um, placement of particular bioactive factors. And in this case, we focused on an, uh, an extracellular matrix molecule called chondroitin sulfate that is found particularly at that interface in the fibrocartilaginous region. And we have modified this to allow it to cross-link into a hydrogel. And again, we've layered these. So this is a pure OPF gel, and this contains chondroitin sulfate. And we've stained with a dye that has affinity for chondroitin sulfate. So here again, we can see spatial organization where we are able to localize a particular matrix molecule in one area of the sample. And why are we interested in chondroitin sulfate? Well, in other preliminary studies in our lab, um, it turns out that the molecule that chondroitin sulfate is a part of in vivo is called agrican. And when we just plate agrican on uh, tissue culture plates and then place either our merostromal progenitor cells or uh, tenon and ligament fibroblasts on top of these coated um, plates, we can see that they ball up and they form a very different morphology than on the control where they're just spread. And we've also been able to correlate that with differences in gene expression. So we're looking at then the effects of potentially this molecule and what are its effects in three dimensions, so including it in our hydrogel in a very specific area. So those, again, are a couple of examples of what we're doing in the lab in terms of co-culturing cells to look at how that affects the, the formation of these interfaces, um, also tethering different bioactive factors. And again, we can do all of these in conjunction with the uh, possibility of tensile loading. And while we're focusing, as I mentioned, on the bone ligament interface at the moment, you can see that these types of model systems could be very powerful to look at all kinds of interfaces between tissues throughout the body. So with that, I would like to thank the members of the lab who did the work that I presented, as well as our collaborators and also our funding sources.